The oat is made up of many positions, and though all of its positions are many, they form one seat. So it is with Christ. If the shortstop should say, because I am not a pitcher, I do not belong to the team, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the team. And if the catcher should say, because I am not a left fielder, I do not belong to the team, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the team. If the whole team were pitcher, who would catch? If the whole team were second baseman, who would pitch? But in fact, the coach has arranged the positions on the team, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one position, where would that leave the team? As it is, there are many positions, but one team. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. We win together, we lose together. You know, this is the toughest part of, of being a coach. Putting 12 guys in a lineup that has nine positions to play and deciding who bats where. A manager basically has two choices in this. <laughs> he can decide to win the game and put his best players in the best positions, or he can decide to have a peaceful evening and put the guys where they want to play. I've... Uh, I've had a harder time this year getting 12 unique boys to be one unified team than I have had in the past. And, and I love my boys, they're good boys. But we've got a handful of guys that it's just hard to make into a team. I, I've got one guy who, who may be my best pitcher, but that's all he wants to do is pitch. And when he doesn't pitch, he pouts. And, and, and if he doesn't pitch, you put him in any other position and he just he doesn't like it, and he doesn't give him. He doesn't give us uh, his, his best performance. I've got another boy who is fantastic in the outfield, um, but he wants to play the infield. In the outfield, he'll catch anything close to him, but in the infield, he'll he'll, he'll dodge the balls, try to catch it without being right in front of it. Uh, so if he misses the ball, it won't hurt him. Um, He's great in the outfield, but he wants to play the infield. I, I haven't figured out why he hates what he does best. I, I got another boy that every time somebody else makes a mistake, he just scowls at him. And not that he doesn't make mistakes. In fact, he cost us a couple runs last, last game, but uh, he, he doesn't scowl at himself. I, I've got one boy who's got a, a word of criticism for everybody. And as a result of that, the other boys shy away from him because they've been hurt by what he said. And the fact that they stay away from him fuels his insecurity and his isolation and makes him lash out all the more. I've got one boy who starts real strong. But when something happens, and something always happens, and he messes up or someone else messes up, he loses his composure, he becomes unraveled. And then he begins to shake and he gets nervous and you might as well put him on the bench, although I don't because it would just hurt his ego more. I've got one boy who, uh, who tries too hard and he strikes out as a result. And when he strikes out a couple of times, that's all he thinks about and he's out of the game for the rest of the game mentally. You know, it's interesting. Now that I think about it, uh, the boys that practice the best teamwork are the boys that don't seem to have as much talent. They're the boys that will play anywhere I ask them to play. They're just glad to be on the team. They're glad to have an, a uniform. They'll bat anywhere in the batting order I ask them to bat. They're just glad to have a chance to hit. I love those guys. <laughs> and not that I don't love the others, but, but those guys are a joy to coach. It seems to me that the more talent a boy has, the harder it is for him to be part of a team. Because the more talent a kid has, the more he wants the opportunity to shine instead of the opportunity to win. And what I try to do as a coach is, is try to get the guys to understand that the object of baseball is to win baseball games, not to have 
individual performances that are better than somebody else's. That's a tough thing, getting 12 guys to be one team. You know what? You know what's harder than that? Getting several hundred people to understand that the church doesn't exist to serve their needs. But the church exists to serve the needs of our community. It's a hard thing to get a bunch of people to understand that this isn't about us. It's about doing what Jesus would do if he were here. But he is here. We are his body. We are the cup of cold water given in his name. We are the, the, the clothing, the, the, the naked and the feeding the hungry. That's, that's, that's us. Leonard Bernstein, famous composer, said that uh, the hardest instrument to play in the whole orchestra is second fiddle. There's an innate need in each one of us to be number one, to be the starting pitcher, to bat cleanup, to drive in the game-winning RBI. But we're called to something bigger than that. We're called to be part of the body of Christ. And when we are the body of Christ, we win. He wins. Our community wins. And I got to get back to work because I'm hoping we win tonight. Now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it.